Today I'm going to go over uh, the use of instant hot water heaters in a motorhome, travel trailer, fifth wheel, or trailer. Um, what I'm using is an XL tankless water heater. It's capable of 5.5 liters per minute or 95 gallons per hour. Um, this is on the smaller side of uh, tankless hot water heaters and it is a vent free unit. Um, you have a couple different options when it comes to tankless hot water heaters. Um, you got uh, your first choice is going to be gas or electric. Uh, this is actually propane, so it's powered off the LP, the same LP line that runs my normal uh, water heater. There, um, you can get electric ones now that are pretty good. Uh, they've gotten pretty good at the electric side, uh, but they do pull quite a bit of electricity. And if you do any kind of boondocking or you want to be able to run uh, for extended periods without uh, being attached to shore power you're going to want a propane one. Now XL America, they're actually a, actually a South American company. Uh, they sell these units on eBay and they have been selling them for quite a while. And uh, it's kind of an interesting, uh, interesting thing. Uh, other countries have been using tankless water heaters exclusively for a long time. Um, in fact, if you look at a lot of foreign films, you'll see uh, a tankless water heater hanging on the wall next to the kitchen in a lot of these movies, and, and you might not actually recognize that what you're looking at is a tankless water heater there. Um, but it, it is, seems to be that uh, America is the only one that hung on to the the tank water heater, and I've heard uh, stories ranging from uh, you know uh, water heater lobbyist uh, lobbying uh, to keep... Uh, tankless water heaters out of the market. Some people say Americans are just stupid. Um, whatever the case, we're finally coming around and you can get uh, a nice propane tankless water heater like this for uh, you know less than $200. Uh, I think these are on eBay. You can get a refurbished one for under $150. Um, this one was refurbished. Uh, Excel sells two different versions of the small unit. Uh, one has a, uh, a battery power um, which I bypass and hook straight to a 5 volt USB power supply. Um, the other version would be uh, a power uh, unit that actually gets powered by a little dyno. So as the water flows through the system, it, it turns a little dyno meter in there, uh, generating electricity that is then uh, stored in a little tiny battery, and that is used to ignite the system. Um, I've been using the same XL water heater for over five years now. I started out with the dyno version and uh, the battery inside the dyno went bad. So they, they they sent me a new one, no questions asked, and they sent me the battery powered version. Runs on 2D batteries. Um, those those 2D batteries last for like six months. It's, uh, it's incredible how little power it takes. Um, but uh, I get sick of crawling up under the sink, so I actually I just cut the end off of a little uh, uh, Motorola 5 volt USB power adapter and ran that into the spade connectors and took out the battery. Um, even though it only I only had to do it like twice a year, um, I figure why not just hardline it so I don't have to crawl under there and replace the batteries anymore. Um, so most most uh, water heaters will have two controls on them. Uh, you've got your uh, flame control, which controls the intensity of the flame, and you've got your water control. Uh, the lower you run your water pressure at, uh, the more heat you'll get into the water. The same with the flame. The more flame you have, the, the hotter you'll get. With these small units, you pretty much set it to max. And I actually got up in there and uh, went past the maximum water thing so that I could actually run a higher water pressure. Um, I do that because I'm running straight out of my uh, normal water heater um, and I adjust the second one so that uh, I'm getting pretty much boiling or near boiling water out of my sink. Uh, but I've got two diversion valves set up here so I can disable either water heater at any given time. Uh, I have replaced this one with a gas electric model, but if you look at RV instant hot water heaters that replace these, it's a, a full-blown, full-size unit like that. Uh, they run way over $600. Uh, I think they run close to $1,000, whereas something like this you can get for under $200. 
there are uh, versions you can get on Amazon now, propane powered uh, water heaters, vent free uh, on Amazon. I think they're just a little over a hundred bucks now. Um, so this review is going to be based on this XL uh, South American version. Um, it, uh, it has done the job for uh, over five years now. Uh, I have disabled the internal oxygen depletion sensor uh, because as you can see I'm running it straight under my sink um, and uh, I was getting it shutting off due to oxygen depletion um, over you know if I was taking a bath or running the shower for a while it would uh, tend to kick off after a while and that's just because there's not as much oxygen down here under the sink whenever I use it I'll open up my cabinet door there um, and uh, this might seem a little hokey to some people but if you think about it uh, how much uh, fumes are you getting off your, your stove in your oven when you leave it on for you know half the day cooking a turkey uh, the only reason the oxygen depletion sensor was going off was because it's in such a small space but I've been using it this way now for over five years um, it has performed flawlessly flawlessly. In fact, the only time uh, I have a problem with it is when the batteries were running out. And now that I've replaced that with the uh, AC line, um, it's uh, not going to be a problem. So I would recommend uh, doing a bypass kit so that uh, if you uh, spring a leak or you have some sort of issue with propane, uh, you can just turn either one off or on at will. Um, that's, a, that's a good setup. Um, let me show you how they work here. Uh, I've got my hot water heater. Let's turn it on. And it turns on instantly. Yeah, I'll turn the flashlight on here. You can see uh, the flames there. But, uh, I'll, I'll shut the diversion valve off. Alright, and then I'll turn it back on. Just really instant. Um, and it's really designed really well on the inside. I have no complaints at all. Um, pretty solid design, and they give you a full, full breakout. Um, I have taken it apart a couple times uh, to check it out. And uh, like I said, in other countries, they've been using this technology exclusively, so they've actually got it pretty well down. Um, the other option, let me check that out. That's my uh, pretty much boiling water coming straight out of the sink. And I've been running it that way for a long time. The only thing I have problem with is uh, the actual uh, hoses. <laughs> those hoses that connect the system together. Um, I end up replacing those every couple years. And in fact, I used to have hoses, uh, a lot more hoses in there. And I just took out all these extra hoses and hard lined it with unions and stuff. So now I only have two hoses running in between my hard lines and the water heater. Um, your other option is to get a bigger unit and they are not vent free. You would have to uh, run a hole through the wall and vent it outside. That's not really a big issue. Um, and uh, you can you can make a nice looking vent on the outside. Uh, this was kind of an experiment for me. I wanted to see if I could get it under the sink there and uh, have it work. And I've actually been so impressed with it um, I can use it exclusively on its own or with in combination with the other water heater. It depends on how much gas I want to save and how hot I want the water. But with both of them going at the same time, I can take a full length shower at full pressure, uh, no problem. It's just like, you know, maybe 20 minutes into a shower or something, uh, the, the first water heater will run out of hot water and then I'll, I'll have to drop down the cold water pressure a little bit because I'm only running on the hot water. But I can I can run this thing all day long as long as this cabinet door is, is open. I've run it um, quite a long time. I you know, filled my entire bath up, um, cleaning the bathtub, everything. Um, so if you're thinking about going tankless or if your uh, original water heater has failed, you could completely plumb it out of the system, put something like this either under your sink or in a um, you know, basement storage compartment. Uh, you can get a bigger unit that will run at full flow and uh, it really is the way to go in an RV. If you stand outside and feel the exhaust coming out of your normal water heater, 
you know that there's a lot of heat being wasted. Um, all that heat that's coming out of that vent is wasted heat. So the efficiency on these RV uh, water heaters and your RV furnace as well is, is deplorable. Um, all that heat coming out is just heat wasted. You're wasting gas like nothing. And uh, you're basically heating up a tiny little tank of water that doesn't even last a full shower. Uh, it's completely ridiculous. Um, if I run on, on this one alone, I can my, my uh, propane usage um, is extended like you know down from like one month on a seven gallon bottle uh, to like you know two months or more on a seven gallon bottle. So uh, anytime you can take the, the horribly inefficient RV appliances out of the picture, um, you should do so, especially if you're a full-time RVer. Um, so my recommendation on a small vent-free tankless water heater, uh, XL brand is a good brand and uh, they had no problems honoring a warranty claim when I had a dyno fail. Um, if you're doing uh, occasional RVing, I would recommend the dyno version, that way you don't have to worry about batteries or uh, power to it. Um, but either situation, you know, a couple D batteries isn't a big deal at all. So I give it a good thumbs up. I actually use that water to make my uh, my coffee every morning and it makes perfect tea temperature water, ramen, anything that takes hot water is right there for you.